news. So breaking today, Crystal Kalininkoff is not returning for the next season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Let's get into it. So this is according to Deadline. It says Crystal Colin Minkoff exits The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after three seasons. I also have a clip of her talking about it, so we'll get into it. Crystal Colin Minkoff is leaving The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I just wanted to share the news that I will not be coming back to film season 14 of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Minkoff said in an Instagram video. It's very bittersweet. Never did I think I would have been asked to do this show in a million years, let alone film it for three seasons. She continued. Every single year I was asked back, I was asked back. It was a blessing. It was an honor. Being the first Asian American on Beverly Hills was a lot of weight on my shoulders that I had that I just have really understood. That I have since just have really understood the magnitude of what that means for people. She's looking really cute and fresh, by the way. I'll show it in a second. Minkoff joined The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills in season 11 of the Bravo franchise and quickly became involved in a feud with Sutton Strack. One of the memorable, memorable lines of the reality series was when Strack called Minkoff's ugly leather pants after claims of being jealous of her. Jealous of what? Your ugly leather pants? When Minkoff joined the show, she became the first Asian American housewife on the show. Throughout her tenure on the reality series, she talked about the struggles of having an eating disorder and how it affected her self-image. As Real Housewives of Beverly Hills head into season 14, Bravo has not announced which housewives will return. So far, the only housewife who confirmed she was not asked back was Anna Marie Wiley, who was only there for one season. The cast of the most recent season includes Kyle Richards, Erica Jane, Jerry Kimsley, Garcelle Bouvet, and Sutton Strack. Kathy Hilton has been rumored to be making a comeback and taking on a friend of role for season 14. She last appeared in season 13 reunion to support her sister, Kyle. Bette Midler recently took to social media to express her interest in joining the Beverly Hills set show as she was in the mood to talk some crap. Former housewife Denise Richards, who guest starred in season 13, left the door open to return if asked back. Okay. Also, who is allegedly in talks with producers is Hilaria, a.k.a. Hillary from Connecticut, Baldwin, which I think would just be horrible. Number one, she doesn't live in Beverly Hills. Don't, does, don't they live in like Boston or Connecticut? Also, like your husband might be going to jail for manslaughter. So maybe get that wrapped up before you try and join a show. Maybe they need the show because they have about a gazillion kids. And also Hilaria Baldwin has cosplayed as a Latina woman when she's not. It's really bizarre and really weird and just very disrespectful to Spanish people and Latin people and Hispanic people. She's just a hot mess. I don't, I'm tired of talking about people who are delusional and cosplaying and racist and I'm tired of all of that stuff. Like, can we, like, no. And like, and even with Anna Marie Wiley, like the trans, like, I'm just so sick of it. No. Can we just do a hard no? Bravo. I'm talking to you. Can it just be a hard no? Anybody who is, has anything to do with racism or homophobia or fraud or anything like that. Can't that just be like a baseline standard for casting? Like, can we just make that a baseline standard? Like Hilaria, Hillary from Connecticut Baldwin is a straight white woman and she's been cosplaying as a Spanish woman. Can we just not bring that conversation up? Like, let's just stop. Like, can we just stop, <laughs> please? But let's hear it from um, Crystal's mouth and I'll talk about how I think she's handling the situation. So I just wanted to share the news that I will not be um, coming back to film season 14 of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, it's very bittersweet. Never did I think I would have been asked to do this show in a million years, let alone film it for three seasons. Every single year I was asked back. I, It was a blessing. It was... Um, an honor. Uh, being the first Asian American on Beverly Hills uh, was a lot of weight on my shoulders that I have since just 
have really understood the magnitude of what that meant for people. And um, I just wanted to thank you guys for Now that is the way you do it. You know, it's like a lot of times with the housewives, I'm looking at you, Anna Marie, I'm looking at you, Lisa Renna. When they get fired, they want to lie and be like, I'm taking a break. It was a mutual, we, we mutually decided not to renew our contract. No, you got fired and you're not returning and you got let go. Just be humble about it. I like that Crystal isn't being bitter. She's not blaming anybody. She's full of gratitude and humility. And this is the way you do it. Because number one, you still want to be bookable for other jobs. And when you go, when you burn the whole house down, like Anna Marie did, who is going to want to book her for anything else? Not just like Bravo, but who's going to want to book her? She's a train wreck. Her and her husband are coming out, talking out of both sides of their faces, lying and getting caught in lies, looking crazy as hell. Who's going to want to book that? This is how you stay bookable. And then this is how you are able to like come back. Unlike a Brandy Glanville or a Leah McSweeney or a, what's her name? Rachel, where it's like, even Nene, got to be honest about it, where on Mad Day, you want to burn the whole house down because you didn't get what you want. Instead of being like, you know what, in the actual reality of the world, what a privilege it is to have such a platform and to be picked to be on these shows and to make all this money and to have, you know, this platform to build your own audience and build your own brand. But, but on Mad Day, because you didn't get what you want, you want to burn the whole house down. And then now not only are you unbookable with Bravo, but now you're unbookable in general. And I don't want people to confuse that with if you are being treated unfairly or something is going on where you're being harassed or assaulted, of course, you are always allowed to speak up and to get retribution and to tell your story 100%. But to be honest with you, 99% of these reality stars who are all up in arms and all pissed off about being fired and want to do lawsuits and saying everything was this and everything was that, it's not really because they feel that they were victims of something. It's because they're pissed they're no longer getting their way and their egos are bruised, which makes it worse for when it happens to not just reality stars, but regular people or other just people in general. Where it's like, well, wait a minute, I was fired, you know, wrongful termination, or there was racism, or there was this and that, or there was coercion. It makes it so much harder for those real situations. But a lot of reality TV people, and I'll just speak on them because that's what we talk about mostly on this channel, they want to pop off and talk about how everything is unfair and they can't believe they were fired and it's favoritism, it's just that and a third because it's mad day and they're not getting the favor that they usually get, you know? So Natasha says, was she fired? Yeah, yeah, of course Crystal was fired. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course she was fired. That was the whole announcement. Yeah, she wasn't asked back, 100%. If they would have asked her back, she would have come back, 100%. I think the only one who, out of the people we're talking about today, we talked about, so NECA was fired is allegedly fired. Robin Dixon fired. Candace Dillard, I think, left on her own accord. And now Crystal, I was fired. Um, but I think this goes into a question I want to put to you guys and what you guys think about this. Do we think production kind of had it out for Crystal? Like a lot of her life either wasn't shot or it wasn't shown. And she almost seemed to always have, since day one, Crystal always felt like a friend of. She never really felt like a part of the cast. And I've always been conflicted on, is she not giving or are they not showing? There's always been a part of me where I'm like, I don't know why, but it just seemed like production just kind of had it out for Crystal. I don't know if it's because... The first two years, because it's her third year on the show, the first two years, maybe because of Kyle, how close Kyle was to production and how much Kyle hated Crystal. As we know, Kyle's favorite producer 
left the show, I think maybe last year or the year before, after the whole Rena thing happened. So I don't know. But I always kind of felt like I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if it was Crystal not not giving or if it was production not showing. I never knew. I couldn't tell. So I want to know what you guys think. Do you think the fact that Crystal always seemed like a friend of, and it always seemed like a big part of her life was just missing, do you think it was because she just wasn't giving good footage? She wasn't actually showing the side of her Beverly Hills rich wife life? Or do you think it was production kind of purposely editing her out or ed editing her in such a way where she just always seemed to be like a B player, not fully a cast member, but more of just like friend of. So I, I, I kind of want to know what you guys think about that. I kinda, I'm not really sure because I do think that production was kind of shady to Crystal. And you might think, well, why would they do that? I have a conspiracy theory. Let me know what y'all think. Okay. This is my conspiracy theory on Crystal and production. Yes, the whole Kyle hating Crystal and maybe Kyle had some pull because well, as we know, Kyle likes to be a producer herself. So maybe there's a bit of that. But I also think it might be because as we know, and no shade to production, but calling a thing a thing, production doesn't always do their due diligence when they do casting. They don't really know the people's backgrounds. They don't really know what, the, what everybody truly has going on or the meaning or the magnitude of what they actually have going on, right? So I think when they cast Crystal, I don't think they really understood the meaning and the magnitude of the coconut water. And follow me with this, you guys, because this is a candy cane candy cane hat on conspiracy theory, but rock with me on this. I don't think they truly understood the magnitude of the coconut water company that Crystal, let me look up the name of it. Um, hold on, Crystal Kong Mink Off Coconut Water, okay. Okay, so according to Distractify, Crystal's coconut water brand is worth $100 million. That's what she said during the reunion. Whether that is true or not, who knows? Who knows? But that's what she's saying it's worth. Now, let me see what's the name of the coconut company. It is called, one second, you guys. I wasn't going to do this theory, but we're doing it now. It's called Enjoy Real Cocoa or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's called Real Cocoa, Real Cocoa. She said it's worth $100 million. Let's just pretend that's true. Maybe that's a ballpark, whatever it is, right? Maybe let's say that's true. I don't think production, casting, Bravo, NBC, Shed Media did their due diligence to understand the actual net worth amount of Crystal's coconut company, how much money it was making, right? And you might be like, well, Candy, why does that matter? Why would production care? Why would they be mad that Crystal has a coconut company? Coconut water company, I'll tell you why. Remember a person called Bethany Frankel? Remember a brand called Skinny Girl? Remember how that's how Bethany made all of her money and when she sold it, she made around, I don't know, $100 million? Remember how Bethany built that brand, created that brand, and everything for that brand through the Real Housewives of New York? For not the Real Housewives of New York City, would there be a Bethany Frankel? The world may never know. Maybe in another dimension. But in the dimension we're living in, hell no. It is what made Bethany put it on the map, she built that company. Bethany loves to tell everybody about the Bethany Clause. This is the Bethany Clause. Since Skinny Girl went so huge and she made so much money off of it, but she never had to share any of that money with Bravo or NBC, 
even though that is the platform that basically gave her free advertising to millions upon millions upon millions of people, right? But because they weren't able to capitalize on it, now in all of the contracts for the housewives, it's called the Bethany Clause. If you promote your business on the show, you have to give the show back 10% or whatever percent it is. It's called the Bethany Clause. If you promote your show. And I heard that is why Crystal never mentions her coconut company, her coconut water company on the show. She never mentions it by name. I don't even think we really knew she had it. She mentions it at the reunion only because it's brought up when she's going against Dorit. But she never mentions it. She never promotes it. She never speaks about it because she doesn't want to have to give them any, them, Bravo, NBC, any part of the money. I think Bravo, NBC realized probably late in the game how much money that, because again, whether she says it or not, the fact that she's on the show People are now, Crystal has a coconut company. They're looking it up. They want to see what it is. No matter what, anything you're doing, people are out here looking at people's like middle school, you know, yearbook shots. I'm going to look at her nose from before. You know, people are always looking at people's stuff. No matter what, if you're on these shows, it's people are going to look up your businesses and it's going to give it a boost no matter what. I think production might be a little pissed that they're not getting any kickback. My question is, I wonder if the agency gives Bravo and NBC any type of kickback or were they able to do it? Like, I don't know. Do we think the Bethany clause happened before or after the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? I don't know that timeline, but I wonder because every single episode of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Kyle is promoting the agency and so is Mauricio. They're wearing hats. They're wearing T-shirts. They're having events. I wonder, are they giving Bravo and NBC a kickback? Or is Kyle, their favorite person, doesn't have to do it? So I think there was a lot of strategy of why Crystal never brought up her coconut company. Because we would be like, well, why isn't she talking about her coconut water company? It's this multi-million dollar company. She runs with her brother and her friend and all of this stuff. And she's this businesswoman. It's in Costco. Why isn't she talking about it? She isn't talking about it because of the Bethany Clause. I'm not, I would do the same. I would do the same. Why, why would I talk about it and have to give them something when by the sheer fact I'm on the show, People are going to look me up. They're going to look it up. Just just because I'm on the show, people are going to Google you and see what you're connected to, see what you're doing. And so no matter what, you're going to still get that free advertising, whether you talk about it or not, by simply being on the show. So who knows? But that's my theory. I think that they're pissed that she's not sharing that $100 million. Because again, remember, these executives, producers, they look at the women as commodities. They are they they are looking at them as how can I make money off of you? This isn't some type of like bestie game. You know, that's what they always say. The, the producers aren't your friends. So the producers and the executives, if they can't make money off of you, or if they feel like they're being treated somehow, they'll give you the bad edit, allegedly, in my opinion. They'll fire you. They'll let you go. That's, again, why I said that was the only reason why they brought Robin back to Potomac. Not because they like Robin or because Robin is favored. It's because they wanted a return on the investment. All of a sudden, everybody's talking about Robin and Juan and the allegations and everything. And she's like, oh, Patreon. They didn't fire her because they wanted to capitalize on the buzz. But then she failed to deliver, which is why now she's fired because they were not able to make the money or get what they wanted out of her. They didn't get the return on the investment in her, so they fired her. Because we have to look at the situation. Not we have to, but I think it's interesting to look at it from, because I think a lot of the fans only think from the perspective of a viewer as a fan, and they don't look at it from the perspective of an executive or a producer because those are two different experiences and two different objectives. If I'm a viewer, Robin would have been fired. 
if I'm an executive, keep her on because she's hot right now. Let's milk it for all it's worth. If we're able to get some juice out of it, we'll keep her. If there's no juice in it, we'll fire her. Think about any other job you're on. If you're not producing as a worker, you're fired. If they can get something from you, they'll keep you on. Doesn't mean they like you. Doesn't mean they favor you. It just means they want to get something out of you because they look at you as someone, as a producer. You know? So we'll see. Missy says, is Lisa giving Bravo a percentage of her businesses? I'm sure she is. I'm sure she is. Definitely, because on on um, Beverly Hills and all of that, it's called the Bethany Clause, 100%. But the thing with Lisa is she was also able to get her the spinoffs, like Vanderpump Rules and Vanderpump Villa and dinner and all that stuff. So not only is she just the talent, but then she also becomes the producer. And that's a whole different level of check. A talent check versus a producer check. Totally different. I was actually just listening to a podcast about this when it came to um, Sex in the City with the pay disparity between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. Kim Cattrall was only making $350,000 an episode for Sex in the City. Sarah Jessica Parker was making $3.2 million an episode because she was an executive producer. So that producer credit versus that talent credit, two different ball games. Was it right? I don't think so. I think that Kim Cattrall and the other lady should have made way more. Also, they could have become producers too, but that's for another discussion. We could do a video on that actually, because I thought that was like really interesting. Anyway, there is that. All right, you guys, let me know what you guys think about Crystal Conmingong's exit from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And then also, what do you think about casting for the next season? Who should come back? Who shouldn't? Where do we think we're going to go with all of this stuff? I want some fresh faces. I want some new names. Um, we can bring back uh, Sutton. We can bring back Garcelle. Kyle, I think, is going to be another flop. I don't think she's ready to be honest about anything. So we'll see. But let me know what you guys think. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, what else do we want to talk about, guys? Don't you know we talked about Alexia, Portia? Okay. Let's talk about Gordon and Mia. Actually, 